back in uh, Main Street of Creswick, day three on my Goldfields walk. So the plan today is that I'll, um, I'm going to start making my way across the Dale, so it's going to take a couple of days. So we'll see how it all goes. The weather's looking half in the in the sky. Grey and gloomy, but it is only 7 o'clock in the morning. But it's meant to be crappy, it's meant to be 10 mil the rain today, 10 mil tomorrow, so it promises to be wet. We've got some big truck closures coming up too, so we'll see how that all goes. Alright, catch you soon. So, as usual, the hardest bit of the walking today could possibly be finding my way out of town. I think I'm going to swing a righty down here. We shall see. All right, that'll do me. Which somewhat fortuitously, fortuitously, there's a hard word at this time of the morning, takes me past the coffee van over here. All right. This is proving to be a little bit easier than I thought leaving town. like I'm uh, walking through the School of Forestry. <laughs> this is an interesting start to the day. It's, a, um, it's actually really well signposted, well, so far through here. Okay, well, I'm out of the um, main admin area for the forestry school, and I'm into into the bush. Well, plantation, it's pine, but I'm out kind of out of town now anyway. So the next town I'll get to will be the next decent sized town. Of any note, will be Dallas. So that'll be sometime tomorrow afternoon. All going well. I don't know if you can see the Creswick local population of Roos are out to say goodbye to me. There they go. Yeah. Probably wonder who's crazy enough to be out here this time of the morning. I'm past it, I'm on a I think it's a land care trail or something. It's, um, it's kind of in the grounds of that forestry school still. There's some interesting mosaics on the ground. Looks like um, looks like maybe they've been done with the local school kids. Fuck, this all looks a bit fucking creepy to me.
So, um, the advantage of this forestry walk is a lot of the, um, or some of the trees are signed. There's a fair bit of information around. This section of the walk's got a, a kind of European feel to it, though. for about an hour just under probably it's eight o'clock now um so far gotten a few sprinkles of, of misty rain but so far so good so every uh minute i get without rain today and tomorrow really is going to be a bonus really Oldfields track. Yeah, looks a little less trodden across there. Oh, well, that's the Goldfields track special. I've come out of some nice forest and now I'm in a plantation. Anyway. It's all, uh, it's all doable. That rain that I mentioned, I've been lucky about. Yeah, it's getting heavier. So this uh, lone gum tree, In a sea of radiator pine plantation forest is the top of I think it's Brackenbury Hill at, um, at 531 meters it's a decent sized hill Pretty grim. That's Creswick down over there, down that way. I'm heading that way. So I'm around um, 6Ks into today's walk, and I'm back where I was yesterday afternoon at St George Lake. Although I was over the other side of the lake yesterday. Today I'm on the opposite side, but yeah, I'm probably about a kilometre and a half from town, I guess. And I've, as I say, I've walked over 6 k. It's been pleasant walking now. The last bit through the pine plantation wasn't the best, but okay. I've left um, St George's Lake behind. Now I'm heading towards the old Koala Park on some nice single track. Alright, so this is the old um, Koala Park I'm going into now. This was built, I don't know, 1900 sometime I think. Um, the only problem was I didn't realise koalas could climb fences so it was built and then the koalas decided just to climb out of the enclosure and um, so uh, subsequently abandoned so I'm just crossing I think I'm out of the koala reserve now I'm just crossing Creswick Creek. Creswick Creek. Assume that is the sides. 
It's been washed down. The bolts have been broken in a flood or something. I'm not sure. It's a bit weird. And there's always um, plenty of wildflowers around here. Particularly late winter, early early spring. This walk has been no exception so far. So I'm passing through an area that was pretty heavily gold mined back in the day by the look of it. The track twists and turns a lot through here. The little bridges over um, old sluice, old um, water races. There's an old sluicing gully where the hill's been eroded by water, by pressure water. So I've left Creswick Creek area. I'm climbing back up into the hills. Looks like uh, local mountain bikers are doing a lot of trail walking around here. There's some pretty impressive mountain bike trails going in. Another hour, I suppose. I'll break out of the forest and I'll be crossing some open country for most of the afternoon, I think. So far, so good on the rain front. I'm just getting a bit of drizzle, but nothing uh, nothing too drastic yet. I haven't had to put the wet weather gear on. I shouldn't say that. But anyway, it's gonna come eventually, I think. I don't know if you can hear me. I think I'll be pulling on the wet weather gear very shortly. So now, this is the first time I've been really beside any farmland for a while. So, it looks like I'm um, leaving, oh, I guess it was Creswick State Park or State Forest or something. Looks like I'm going to be on an easement for a while now. So this could, this is the, probably the start of my road walking now, I'm thinking, for quite a few hours. So, um... I guess there'll be a little bit less video along here as I just crunch the numbers out, crunch the k's out. We'll see how it all goes though, you never know. Might be something to see. So this uh this red soil that I'm walking over is um good for spots I think it's gonna be over the wind. Potato growing area, Victoria. I'm not 
not sure if you can see those little lumps, those little hills on the horizon, some are clouded in. They're extinct volcanoes. Back when this, uh, this area has a lot of fairly recent, in geological terms I think, fairly recent um, volcanic action. And that's, that explains the red soil too I think. swing right up here at this T-intersection onto the main Ballarat Dalston Road and drop into Dean which is that little hamlet over there I don't think there's anything there as far as um, like a coffee or anything I right, may be wrong we'll have a look when I get there So I'm leaving the little hamlet of Dean. Looks like they did have a pub, actually, but it's probably about, with wind chill, it's probably about minus one degree at the moment, so it didn't feel like a beer. Um, but there was a sign saying beer. So now I'm heading up towards um, Molling, Mollingop, Mollingop. Um, and I'm heading towards the Wombat State Forest now, which is where I'll camp tonight at some stage. I've got a fair bit more road walking in front of me though. Alright, catch you soon. So I've given up, thrown the, the jacket on just to really keep the, the wind chill at bay. So far so good with the rain. Still no rain. But um, it's bitingly cold with the wind. Alright, um, I'm heading Backshores, like I said before, in the Wombat State Forest. So, it'll probably be heaven. I'm probably going to climb a little bit higher. Once I get in the trees, it'll probably cut the wind down a bit, I reckon. That's what I'm. Uh, the wind's just howling across these paddocks. I'll catch up with you later. Kind of on the edge of the bush line now. There's a few quiet kind of holiday or weekenders scattered around the bush. But I'm about to start making my way into um into Wombat State Forest. I just had a shower rain pass through which was the heaviest I've had so far. It wasn't too bad though. No, it didn't really get wet. I'm heading now towards the sections that are, I think are gonna be closed. Well, on the website it says closed. We'll see what happens when we get up here. So after a couple of hours of, of road walking, I'm back on some single track now. So this is around the area that it says online that the track's closed. So I haven't seen any sign of it yet. And there's ways around it, but we'll see how we go. So far, so good anyway. Um, the weather looks a bit, a bit average. And I've actually got the wet weather gear off now, it's getting too hot. Um, now I'm back in the trees, it's cutting down the wind. And it's just the very lightest misty, misty rain falling at the moment. <laughs> Can't even pull the Gore-Tex on. But I've got a feeling that could change any minute, but I've been thinking that all day, so who knows. With any luck, I'll get a few more Ks under my belt before it rains. Well, I'm thinking it's time. Let's pull the jacket on again. Oh. 
<sighs> so our wombat state forest is a, a working forest. So um, I'm just past, passing by a logging coop here. They're not working today. Obviously, don't blame them. That may be why. On the website said sections of this track are closed. I haven't found any evidence on the ground except for that no entry sign into the logging coop. I don't want to go in there anyway. I actually thought it was probably closed from the floods and storms a couple of years ago still, but maybe it's closed because they're logging. I'm not sure. Who knows? Anyway, we'll slog on into the into the rain. Looks like there's a track mark around here, so I'm still on the right track. Stop, all right. Well, that sun is almost, well, almost out. I'm being a bit optimistic. That's as close as it's been out to all day, though. I'm um, still going pretty good at the moment. I think I'm going to head down towards... Past Mullins Dam, I might try and head to the old uh, railway line and um, see if I can find somewhere to camp down there. We'll see, I'll make it a 30, I don't know, 32, 33k a day or something. That'll put me within fairly easy reach of Dalesford tomorrow, even if it does pour with rain all day. So we'll see how we go, but now it's a rough plan at the moment. So I'll probably walk for, an, walk for another couple of hours yet. So I've just popped out to Dalesford and down at Mullins Dam, the Dalesford end of this section. And this, where this logging coop is, I see this writing on the wall on, the, on a tree. There was nothing at the other end. It looks like um, four drives and trail bikes have been going through. <laughs> Anyway, I've gone through. They weren't even walking. But, yeah, the area is the declared public safety zone. I think that's more or less so they can keep the protesters out of the logging coop. Anyway, um, there was no information at the other end of the track. So, But online it did say parts of this section were closed. So I was waiting for it. I just thought I might have got it on the way in, not on the way out. But anyway... Such is life. We'll keep walking. This is a um, this little dam here is where a lot of people camp, apparently. Um, doesn't look the most appealing to me at the moment, but it's a bit early. It's not. It's only about three o'clock, so I'm going to keep going. So I guess if you were going to camp here, this would be the most level spot. It's also the spot where my four-wheel drive brothers have been uh, doing a bit of circle work. So yeah, like I said, not the most appealing spot. If you ask me, I'm going to push on, find somewhere a bit stealthier and a little bit more off a, off a track, I think. Okay, it's 3.30. I've arrived at the uh, old Wombat Station site. This is the start of an old tramway section, I believe. Dalesford 20 Ks, Creswick 29. Hmm. My GPS is saying about 30. 33, I think. Anyway, 
I'm going to head off along this old tramway and yeah, possibly camp somewhere when I find some flat ground off on the bush away from people. We'll see how it all goes. See, so, yeah, this old uh, fairly substantial railway line or tramway used to carry timber out of the hills for the mines, I think. Back in the oldie days. Size of the um, the cuttings and the fill-ins. This is a little bit more substantial than a lot of the other old tramways that used to wind around the hills. There's a lot of walk, a lot of work going into this one. The only problem with these old cuttings it makes it easier because the walk is fairly level, they get a bit damp underfoot. Otherwise, known as the well, now known as the Goldfields track, I think I've always been confused about the names of this track, to be honest with you. But I'm going with Goldfields track for this walk. survive that cutting I'm just coming out of that cutting now didn't survive that with dry feet though yeah well almost 10 o'clock anyway this is a bit like the enchanted forest in here okay I reckon this will do for camp an old four-wheel drive track. It's relatively flat. It's a bit of a slope, but there's a road down there that I'm meant to be on. Looks like all the big trees that are going to fall are falling. I've got a fairly clear canopy. Well, grey above me. So let's get the duplex up, I reckon. All right, got the camp set up. It's on White Point. Oh, just off White Point track. I've got the sleeping system highly organised in there. I'll fix it up a bit later. Just cooking tea. Settling in for a 14 hour night, I reckon. Okay, it's time to sign off. Cooking has been done, dinner's been eaten. It's about oh, five o'clock, I think. Maybe quarter past five, it's getting dark. I'll swing the camera around. Um, so today was a fairly solid day. Walked about 37, 37 k's, I think. Climbed almost a thousand meters. The good thing is the weather wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be. Um, it's bloody cold, especially in that open farmland where it was howling across the tops. But um, didn't get a lot of rain. Um, we'll see if it turns up tonight. If it doesn't turn up, that's a good thing. Um, I'm just camping off White Point Road in a bush camp, and a stealth camp. There's plenty of stealth camping around here, just leave no trace if, you, if anyone follows in my footsteps. All right, I'm gonna crawl into the duplex um, for a long night, but hopefully a comfortable night. All right, see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we walk to Dalesford. It's a wild old night in the duplex tonight.